So now we're going to be talking about how to carry out addition and subtraction of numbers in other base. But as a quick recap, we're going to look at some pretty simple examples to get the basic reasoning behind it. So let's think about addition in base 10. So now you are given a question, say 798 plus 256. So how do you go about this? Like you all know, you say 8 plus 6, which is 14. You write the 4 and you carry the 1. 9 plus 1 plus 5 is 15. You write the 5 and you carry the 1. I have 7 plus 2 plus 1, which is 10. You write 0, carry the 1 here, then you bring it down. So you have 1054. Let's take a look at another example. In this example, you are told to add 98 plus 78 plus 52. Now, I should mention that anytime you see numbers in which there is no base in it, what it means is that the number is in base 10. So take note, when there is no base number, it automatically means that those numbers are in base 10. So we'll carry out our addition as usual. 8 plus 8 plus 2 give you 18. You write 8 and you carry 1. 7, 9 plus 1 plus 7, 17 plus 5 give me 22. You write 2 and you carry the 2 to the other side, which you then bring down. So you have 2 to 8. But now I want to give you a general idea to think about this so you can apply it to other base. So let's go back to our previous example. In this example, we are told to add 798 plus 256. But what are we doing in essence? Now think about it this way. I told you that in base 10, you can only have digits that can be represented between 0 to 9, right? So now we have 8 plus 6, which is 14. 14 is greater than 9, so there's no way I can just write the result down. So what do I do? I divide the result by the base. Now you will see why I'm doing this. So the result is 14, so I write 14. And what base am I operating in? I'm operating in base 10. So I divide by 10. And what would this give me? 10 you go in 14 one time. And what will be the remainder? The remainder will be 4. 10 in 14 we go 1. One time, which is 10. Then the remainder will be 4. So what am I doing in essence? I'm writing the remainder down here as the sum. Then the whole number. I'm transferring it to the next place value. I'm transferring it to the next place value. So I'm transferring the one here. So I have 9 plus 1 plus 5, which is 15. But unfortunately, it's also greater than 9. So what do I do? I divide by the base. So I have 15 divided by 10, which is 1 remainder 5. So I write the remainder down and I take the whole number up. And I have 7 plus 2 plus 1, which is 10, which is greater than 9. So I divide by the base also. But what do I have? Now I have 1 and my remainder is 0. So I write down the 0 and I bring the 1 to the next place value. There's nothing here, so I just bring it down. So in general, this is basically what we are doing. So when the sum of two numbers exceeds the range allowed to by that base system, you have to divide it by the base so you can express the number in terms of whole number and remainder. You write the remainder down and you take the whole number to the next place value. So let's take a look at the next example that we we'll try to solve. So in this example, let's solve it using that idea. So we have 98 plus 78 plus 52 trying to add them together so now you have 8 plus 8 plus 2 which is 18 18 is greater than 9 so what do i do i divide by the base so i have 18 divided by 10 and what does this give me 
it goes here one time and the remainder is 8. So I write the remainder down here and I take the whole number to the next place value. I have 9 plus 1 plus 7 plus 5 which is 22. So I have to divide by the base. And 10 will go in 22 how many times? 2 times. And what will be the remainder? The remainder will be 2. So I'll write the remainder here and I take the whole number to the next place value which I just drop down since there is nothing here. So I have what? 2, 2, 8. So now we're going to be extending this idea to other base numbers. So let's take a look at a quick example at this um, simple question in which you have 1, 0, 1, 1 in base 2 and you are told to add it to 1, 0, 1, 1 also in base 2. So how do we tackle something like this? First and foremost, as I've explained before, you know that in base 2, you can only have digits represented with 0 and 1. So no number can exceed 1. So let's start out. You have 1 plus 1, which is 2. As you can see, 2 is greater than 1. So with our general idea, what do we do? We divide the result by the base. So I have 2 divided by 2. 2 into 2 will go one time and the remainder will be what? 0. So I write down the remainder underneath here and I take the whole number to the next place value of 1. I have 1 plus 1 plus 1 which is 3. 3 is greater than 1 so I divide by the base. And what am I left with? I'm left with 1 and the remainder is what? 1. So I write the remainder down, this number I write here, and I take the whole number to the next place value. So I have 1 plus 0 plus 0, which is 1, which is not greater than 1, so I can just write out the result down. And in this last case, I have 1 plus 1, 2, which is greater than 1, so I have to do that and divide by the base. So I have 1 remainder 0. I write the remainder down and I take the whole number to the next place value which I then bring down. So as you can see, this number plus this number is equals to 10110 in base 2. Pretty straightforward, right? So let's take a quick example at another example. Now we are going to be working in base 5. So you are giving 2 2 TV in base 5 plus 120 TV in base 5. So how do you walk through this? The same idea that we have been explaining. So you start out, you know that in base 5, these can only range between 0 to 4. So any number that exceeds 4, you have to convert it by dividing it by the base. So now you have start out, you have 3 plus TV which is 6. 6 is greater than 4. So you have to divide by the base. And this time around, I'm going to use the long division for those that are familiar with it. But it's still the same idea. So you have 6 and I'm dividing by the base, which is 5. So 6 in 5 will go one time. And what is the remainder? The remainder will be 1. So you write the remainder down there and you take the whole number to the next place value. You have 2 plus 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus 1 which is 5 which is greater than 4. So you have to divide by the base. So you have 5 divided by 5 and you are left with what? 1 and the remainder is 0. So you write the remainder down there and you take the whole number to the next place value. So you have 2 plus 1 plus 1 is equals to 4 which is no more than 4 so I can write it directly so when I add these two numbers in base 5 the result is in the result is 401 in base 5 now let's look at another example in base 5 so here we are giving 432 in base 5 plus 341 in base 5 I thought to add these two numbers together 
So what do we do? We say 2 plus 1, 3. 3 is not greater than 4, so you can write it directly. You have 3. Now you have 4 plus 3 is 7. 7 is greater than 4. So you have to divide by the base. So you have 7. And I'll go back to my other method, divided by 4 of division. So what would this give me? 4 will go in 7 one time. And the remainder is what? TV. So I write down the remainder here, which is TV. Oh, sorry. There's a mistake. I made a mistake. So I'm supposed to divide by the base. So see, you have to be really careful to make sure you're dividing by the base. So now let's correct that. So you have 7 divided by 5. And what would that be? You have 1. And what is the remainder? The remainder is 2. So I write the remainder here. So let me clean this. Okay, so I have 2 and I take the whole number to the other place value, 1. So I have 4 plus 3 plus 1, which is 8, which is greater than 4. So I have to divide by the base. So I have 8 divided by 5, which is essentially 1 remainder theory. So I write the whole number, the base the remainder here. And I take the whole number to the next place value. There's nothing here, so I just bring it down. So adding these two numbers in base 5 gives me 1, 3, 2, 3 in base 5. As you can see, the results, none of the digits here exceeds a 4 as defined by the base 5 system. So finally, for addition, let's take a look at this example in base 8. So here we are told to add 456 in base 8 with 123 in base 8. So as we have defined, base 8 digits can only range from 0 to 7. So let's start out. You have 6 plus 3, which is 9. 9 is greater than 7, so I cannot write it here because it defies the rule of base 8. So what do I do? I divide it by the base. So I have 9 divided by 8. And what is this equals to? Equals to 1. And the remainder is 1. So I write down the remainder. And I take the whole number to the next place value. I have 5 plus 2 plus 1, which is 8. 8 is greater than 7, so I can't write it down because it defies the rule of base 8. So I divide by the base. I have 8 divided by 8 which is 1, and the remainder is 0. So I write down the remainder here, and I take the whole number to the next place value. I have 4 plus 1 plus 1, which is what? 6. 6 is not, up to, is not more than 7, so I can write it down directly. So when I add these two digits in base 8, my result is 601 in base 8. As you can see, none of the individual digits here exceeds a 7 as defined by the base 8 rule. So this is all you need to know basically in terms of addition in bases other than base 10. But how do we deal with subtraction? So to give you a quick idea, I'm going to start out by solving what you're already familiar with. So let's look, take a look at this example where you have 317 in base 10 minus 158 in base 10. So how do you do? You say 7 minus 8. You know that this is not possible because 8 is greater than 7. So what do you do? You borrow 1 from here. You are left with 0. And you had it here. So you have 17 here now. And you can see 17 minus 8, which is equals to 9. Now, 0 similarly cannot minus 5. So you borrow 1, you take 1 away from me, and I left with 2, and you had it here. You have 10. Then minus 5, you have 5. Then 2 minus 1, you have 1. So the answer is 159 in base 10. So now, I want to try to generalize the idea in relation to base so we can extend it to other base. So what are we really doing when we are subtracting two numbers 
in base 10. So this is what we are really doing. We have 317 minus 158. Both in base 10. I'm not going to write the base and I should know by now. If there is no base number, it means that the numbers are in base 10. So what we are really doing in essence is that we are saying 7 minus 8. This is not possible. So we are taking one away from here. We are left with zero. But when we now want to carry it to the next place value or the lower place value, what we are really doing in excess is we are adding the base number to the number that was existing here before. Now I'm working in base 10. So what I'm really doing is that when I take one away from what is here, I'm adding the base number 10 to this digit i'm adding this base number to this digit here so in excess what i'm doing is i'm saying the base number 10 plus 7 and what does this give me 17 so 17 minus 8 give me 9. similarly zero cannot subtract 5 because 5 is greater than 0 so i'm taking every one from here and i'm left with 2 but when I'm taking it to this lower place value, what I'm doing is that I'm adding the base number to the number that was existing there. So I'm adding a 10 to this number. So 10 plus 0 is what? 10. So 10 minus 5 will give me a 5. Now, 2 minus 1, there is no complexity, is 1. So I can just write that out directly. So now I get 159. Why have I chosen to generalize it? We'll see when we start solving examples in other base numbers or base system. Now, let's take a look at this example where we are told to subtract 11 from 1101. So we have 1101 in base 2. I are told to subtract 11 from it. So what am I going to do? We have 1 minus 1, which is pretty straightforward, goes to 0. But now you have 0 minus 1, so we have a complexity here because 1 is greater than 0. So what do we do? Take away 1 from here, and we're left with 0. But now, what do we add to this digit when we are taking when we have taken 1 away from here? As I've explained before, what we have to this digit is determined by the base in which you are operating. In the previous example, we added a 10 to these digits because we're dealing in base 10. So now, can you guess what we had now that we're dealing with base 2? Yes, you got it right. We're going to add 2 to this number. So when you add 2, you have 2 plus 0, you have 2. Then you have 2 minus 1, gives me 1. Here is already a zero. There is nothing here, so I can bring down my zero. And here is a one. I can bring down my one. And don't forget to put the base number if you are working in any base that is not in base two. So I have one. That is not in base ten, rather. So I have one zero one zero in base two. So let's take a quick look at another example. So now I want to try to do this subtraction in base. Eight. So I'm giving 456 in base 8 minus 173 in base 8. So how do I go about this? The first is pretty straightforward. I have 6 minus TV, which is TV, so I can just write down directly i have tv but the second one creates kind of a complexity because i have five minus seven which is impossible to solve because seven is greater than five so what do i do i take one away from here and i'm left with what tv but what am i going to add now that i've taken one away from me i'm going to add the base number yes you got that right the base number to this number and since i'm working in base eight i'm going to add eight to this number so what is 8 plus 5? 8 plus 5 is 13. So I can subtract 7 from the sum of 8 and 5. So what is 13 minus 7? I have 6. So I can write that down. 
and half taking minus one pretty straightforward two so i have 260 in base eight so this really sums up how to deal with addition and subtraction in base in basis other than base 10 so what i really advise for you to do now is to go to textbooks or go to past questions and see where additions and subtractions in other bases are being presented and try to tackle them and if you have any complexity or any challenges you can put it in the forum so you can interact with other students and figure it, figure it out so that sums up what we're going to be talking about in terms of addition and subtraction in other base system and in the next class we are going to be talking about multiplication basically